bells, but I never heard them ringing. No, I never heard them at all till there was you. There were birds in the sky, but I never saw them winging. No, I never saw them at all till there was you. Karen and David. Good morning. My name is Sharon Parrish and I will be the platform assistant for today. We're going to have a wonderful, wonderful service. Of course, David Gray and David Kane will be the musicians. And today we have three special guests. Their topic is my journey, my unity journey. And the speakers will be Carolyn Dozer, Sarah Morrison, and Scott Adams. We are really looking forward to all of you and discovering your journeys with unity. Now I will do the centering prayer. And the two prayers that I picked today is from the Love, Healing, and Abundance, Bringing Spiritual Wisdom to Life by Reverend Mary L. Kuprala. The opening, the centering prayer today is trust the spirit within. Trust the spirit within, dear friend, to help you relax and let go. Trust the spirit within to increase your health, happiness, and contentment. Trust the spirit within to bring you refreshing rest, sleep, and renewal each night. Trust the spirit within to reveal to you the right companions and satisfying relationships. Trust the spirit within to pave the way to effective action and enjoyable living. Trust, truly trust the spirit within. Amen. In a mellow tone, feeling fancy free. I'm not alone. I've got company. Everything's okay. The live long day.
peloton feeling fancy free i'm not alone i've got company everything's okay the live long day everybody. I'm happy to be here today to talk about my journey to unity and happy to follow that very jaunty music, lovely music. I grew up in a family where we always went to church regularly and uh, they were always Protestant churches and we lived overseas a lot so when we were overseas we would go to what one of the English language churches in the area so we went to one place it was Lutheran, one place it was Anglican Methodist. I don't remember the other because I was too young. But when we were back in this country, we went, we went to a Southern Baptist uh, ch church. My father grew up in that um, in that sect, not sect. <laughs> um, let me just say in, in that church. Fortunately, it was, it was not hellfire and brimstone, and none of the churches that we went to were so I was able to really develop a sense of God, of a God that was very supportive, very loving, and pretty much had my back, which was very sustaining for me in, in high school. Uh, but then when I got to college, I did what a lot of people start to do, which is to ask questions. And I think one of the biggest questions that I had was, you know, how could a loving God have allowed the Holocaust to happen. I just couldn't get my mind around it. So I really began to, to let go of some of my belief. And remember, I was at Wake Forest, and I went to with a roommate to a uh, Southern Baptist church there in downtown Winston-Salem. And this church was a big one. I mean, it occupied a, a lot of real estate in Winston-Salem. And the entire sermon was about we have to build a new wing and you have to give money for that and it's being televised and everything and i said to myself this is the last time i'll ever step foot in a southern baptist church so and that was also the early 70s of course when you know everything was being a lot of things were being questioned certainly people my age had, that i knew we were not going to church was not cool and at that point, the whole idea of having a spirituality, you know, away from church or, or organized religion, I had not really come to, to, to know that at all. So I, I left the country and we went over, I was overseas with my family for a year. And then when I came back, I transferred to UVA. And at that point, I came out to myself as gay and fortunately, there was a little gay student union there that gave us a broom closet that we could meet in. But it was very, very affirming to um, to have this group. And of course, needless to say, uh, that really affirmed for me, there's no place for me in traditional religion at all, because at the time, there really wasn't, with one exception, and that being the Unitarians, God bless them, because... I, I had spoken at different, like the medical school and different places about being gay. And um, a Unitarian woman, a woman who's Unitarian was in the audience and asked me if I would speak to their Sunday school, no, no less, which I did. So God bless the Unitarians. And then in 1984, my younger brother died of suicide, from suicide. And I really started to ask questions again because... I'm sure most of you have lost, uh, given most of our ages, have lost someone you really, really loved. And you really begin to 
to ask, well, what, what is this all about? You know, how can you love someone so much and they're gone? And of course, my questions were, you know, is John existing somewhere? And you just, how can this be? Um, so more and more, I was thinking on those lines and more and more feeling if this is just it, that that seems meaningless. And yet, and I also didn't feel though my earlier belief started to come back. And that led me to attend a um, gay friendly Presbyterian church downtown. I was there for a while. And over the ensuing years, I've been in and out of going to church. And I, attend, I attended a religious science church, a Methodist church, an Episcopal church for a while, even ventured some into Buddhism that I continue very much to value. So I guess you could say I was a church hopper. I prefer to say I was a spiritual explorer, although there were, there were a lot of times uh, when I didn't go to church, and more and more I began to practice my own spirituality through through medica meditation, reading, going to mindfulness retreats. But I remembered the the support and the how, how helpful it was to my spiritual practice to have a place where you can go and meet with other people on a Sunday morning and talk about these these questions and and be with other people who were spiritual searchers as well. And so <clears throat> I I was very open when Jan asked me to come to to your church here online, uh, which I did. And um, I liked very much what I was hearing, and it really fit for me. Um, it's particularly the idea that, you know, that, that this church follows, strives to follow the teachings, the, the emphasis is on the teachings of Christ, of Jesus, not on worshiping him and the whole idea that that we have Christ consciousness within us and and that we can access this this divinity within us through prayer and meditation and and getting together with each other and reading um that was very very powerful and this is the whole idea too that that we co-create with God and that I know uh very important ideas to me that you know that we can strive to live from that divinity within and I that's sort of my northern star now and often don't get there probably very rarely get there but that's I'm trying so thank you for listening that's my story and uh, now I'll turn it over to Sarah thank you Thank you, Carolyn. Uh, your story has uh, certainly resonated with me, and that's one reason I finally agreed to do this. I apologize to Kay Wood for all the times I turned down the opportunity to do this before, and I'm still just as nervous, even though you're my family, <laughs> as I was back then and not comfortable talking about something that I'm still investigating, which is unity and other spiritual paths like you, Carolyn, um, Buddhism and all the, the wonderful ways of finding our truths. Um, I decided I would do it because it wasn't quite fair for me to just observe and enjoy each of you telling your stories. Um, and I hope that you'll tell your stories again if you've already done it because they really are helpful um, in finding our own places. Um, I wrote quite a bit and have been, um, and it was good for me to think through what did bring me to unity. And I'm gonna cut it down as I talk. Some of it uh, is really what Carolyn said, uh, but I also came from a, uh, a family that went to church often um, my grandmother that I knew best was a Baptist from West Virginia, and she always seemed to really live her faith. She helped those that were poorer than herself, and she encouraged those who lacked hope or purpose in their lives. And I adored her, and I looked forward to visits. She would take me up the hill 
to the little church where one of those popular images of Jesus knocking at the door was prominent. She told me that we must choose to open the door because he wants to come inside us, which was not quite a unity teaching, but it may have gotten me started about thinking that God could dwell within. Among the books she gave me was a copy of In His Steps, a classic written in 1896, which proposed that in every type of situation, we would know what was right if we only asked ourselves, what would Jesus do? That helped me as a child trying to be perfect and is still something I come back to, even though my understanding of Jesus has changed greatly. My father joined the Baptist church at the urging of my mother, and we four children all eventually made what was called, quote, confessions of faith, unquote, while the hymn, Just As I Am, played in the background. We were each baptized into church membership and attended Sunday school. And as we grew older, I was in choir, youth groups, went on retreats, even attended a Billy Graham cr crusade when he came to a nearby city. Even from a young age, however, like Carolyn, the idea that a loving God would condemn people to an everlasting hell or let horrible things happen to people that never even heard about Jesus. It just didn't seem right. I became the provocateur in my thankfully progressive Baptist churches. I even seriously considered going to seminary and becoming a medical or social work missionary. Life events intervened and in my late twenties and early thirties, I began to travel outside the US. Some unconventional trips to the Middle East, India and China were very intense experiences that led me to feel even more deeply that my concept of God could not let him turn his back on these people who sought him in very different ways. I felt that there must be several paths to truth and my quest would be to explore them. I knew that I needed to be with others who shared that goal. When I finished Two years in Liberia as a Peace Corps volunteer at over age 37, I knew that I wanted to find a new job doing international development work, but a hiring freeze was on in several agencies. I relocated from Louisiana to DC anyway. I hoped to find a church in DC where I could make deep friendships, but I just didn't feel authentic in the traditional churches I visited. I wanted to find a church that would challenge the interpretations of the Bible I had grown up with and that lovingly included those who didn't fit an accepted mold. I wanted to explore new ways of thinking about truth and spirituality with like-minded people on this quest. One Sunday morning, some of you know, I was walking around Capitol Hill from my apartment on North Carolina Avenue and it took me by a church on A Street where people were leaving. They were laughing, talking, hugging each other, and they evidenced a joy that I felt I was missing. The group seemed to be diverse in age, race, dress, gender, and economic status. And I decided to attend a service. As others often say, I felt like I had found my people. The music was amazing, the people genuine, the minister quirky in her age-related mannerisms, but also funny, profound, delightful, and loving. I began to attend regularly and took advantage of some book studies, retreats, and a mastermind group with Jane West, Pat Weeks, and Vicki Smith. It truly helped me get through the language training required by my new employer, the State Department. When I went off on my first assignment, I carried with me several Unity Classic books and cassette tapes. This was 1991. I didn't find a Unity group in the various countries I lived in over the years, but I did find friends on their own spiritual paths who enriched mine. Thanks to the Unity experience with Amalia and Butch and several of you from the A Street Church, I carried with me 
the beginning seeds of, of learning to commune with what to call it, God, divine idea, supreme be consciousness, ultimate creative energy, so many names for God. To see the divine in all and including myself was a goal demanding mindfulness, a different definition of prayer. I was humbled to realize how much I still needed to learn and would always need to learn, that there was a new freedom and an eagerness to do that. Freedom with the responsibility to make choices, make errors, choose again, and trust in divine order. I visited Community on the Hill during home leaves and that became one of my goals. I needed refueling. That was the days before the days of e-bulletins. So sometimes I had to do some research to find where you were, but I did. The flexibility and loyalty of the church members to each other, despite periodic challenges of leadership and location, always impressed me as extraordinary. The opportunities to learn were more than I could even take advantage of. But I began to even uh, think about studying A Course in, of, in Miracles when I visited Unity Center in Missouri and bought the book, which I only started studying during COVID with Jan and a group of you. Wonderful people like John Bell surprised me. Sometimes when I was overseas, he would send me a friendly email and it made me feel I was still connected with you all. I saw your love and care for each other as living the truth and being the family in action. As retirement came to the area, I felt I needed to make a decision about attending a church closer to my home. But none of the congregations I visited around Alexandria had the embracing feel of acceptance and desire to grow in spiritual understanding that Community on the Hill, now UCDC, gave me. So after about 25 years of loose affiliation, while I lived overseas, I made the leap and became a member. That was a big decision for me. But without that commitment, I really had no voice and more vitally could not vote on issues important to me and to the future of this community. In summary, my, uni my unity story continues. I'm eager to study and have new experiences that I know will help further uncover the truth within and to make mindful choices that reflect that truth. I appreciate each of you who have helped me grow this far, thus far. There's no time to list, to list all the people and all the ways that you've done this. You've allowed me to learn from you without forcing me to give much back. You are my lights. I thank you, and I turn it over to Scott. Thank you, Sarah, and thank you too, Carolyn. It's, it's really wonderful to hear your stories, and I'm really honored and grateful to share my story too. Um, and I must say, Chick, I was really surprised when you asked me to share my story because I've been such an infrequent visitor over the last few years. Um, actually, the last 28 years, um, I really was only um, a regular visitor for two years um, during the two years that I lived in DC. And uh, I now live in New York City. And before here, um, Japan and San Francisco and upstate New York. Um, but this group is truly special um, to me. And uh, as I know it is to all of you, because uh, most of or many of you have been with the group for just about as long or longer than I have. Um, and um, it's become really, in many ways, a spiritual home for me, uh, even though I'm such an infrequent visitor. Um, so I've kept coming back infrequently, um, both in person when I had opportunities and now virtually. 
Um, my Unity journey started, um, if you're doing math, 30 years ago, almost exactly 30 years ago. And I owe it all to Pat Weeks. And um, I wish she were here today. Um, and Phil, I'm so glad that you are. And um, as I think uh, most of you know, Pat was a beloved member and leader and founder of Unity DC and the previous iteration um, Community on the Hill, which I first joined. Um, I met Pat when I came to DC as an intern at a small nonprofit called Food Aid Management. And uh, Pat was my supervisor. And I was amazed by this woman who uh, did everything in the office, including speed reading and um, writing executive summaries for hundreds, literally hundreds of books in a library, uh, complex books and managing communication between 10 organizations, among many other things. She was so intelligent and positive and funny and um, also a damn good Scrabble player. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> we would play during lunch. <clears throat> and whatever magic she had, I wanted some of that too. And uh, including her ability to instantly manifest a seven letter double word score for 75 points while humming a Broadway tune and, and giving me a lesson about life. Um, more than anything, Pat was spiritual. She talked about books and mediums and all kinds of woo-woo stuff. And she shared insights and came um, to me and just by looking at my handwriting and rubbing her hand over it, she had these amazing insights into me and things that I didn't even know about myself that, that turned out were true. So in many ways, her intuition, she was sort of an, a medium herself. Um, I was open and interested to all of this stuff, and I had some exposure. My parents were on a spiritual path. Um, they explored Eastern philosophy when I was a kid. They practiced transcendental meditation. I actually learned TM as a young child, um, received a mantra, and um, practiced a, a I, I learned uh, sort of walking uh, meditation for young people. Uh, and um, before I came to DC, I had my first experience in Japan and I studied more meditation and learned about Buddhism there. Um, but when Pat uh, mentioned that her spiritual beliefs were rooted in uh, the Unity Church, I focused on the word church and was skeptical. Um, I grew up going to a Methodist church um, for a number of years. And um, it was not necessarily a bad experience. Um, in many ways, it was a good experience. I loved the community. It was a family activity. The music was wonderful. Um, but I never really understood the Bible stuff or the sermons and the sort of preachy part of it. And as I got older, I um, and I learned more about churches, I just became less interested in joining one. And I sort of had an aversion to them as I learned about what some churches do to people um, in this country and have done historically. Um, so when Pat first invited me to a unity service, I was not interested or I was hesitant. 
And maybe that was in part because at the time we were actually meeting at a Methodist church, the one on um, Seward Square um, down on Capitol Hill. But eventually I did give it a try and it was hard not to because this was the amazing Pat Weeks um, and I lived nearby and um, after all, you know, Pat and Phil were driving all the way in from Bethesda. Um, as were you, I know um, Jane, as because I know you were neighbors. And um, so I went and I needed it. I was struggling. And, and so one Sunday morning in the summer of 94, I walked into Unity and I sat down next to Pat and Phil. And I looked up at this tiny 80 something year old minister named Amalia Frank, beaming with a big smile. And I remember her message had nothing to do with Bible passages. It's not that it was completely removed, but it was more about lessons and it was practical and funny and meaning, meaningful and it resonated. And so did the incredible music that was led by Michael Patterson and the people. And at the end, uh, as we all held hands and sang the prayer for protection and our thoughts, our prayers, and we held up our hands, I felt chills and tears came down and I knew I had found a new home. So after that, I joined and I started getting involved and I joined a mastermind group, um, A Course in Miracles, the choir, retreats, and that's where I got to know um, Byron, Byron, my buddy Byron. Um, Jane, Margaret, Chick and Cheryl, Sylvia, um, so many of you, okay, would, I was hooked and, um, but I was still struggling. And at the end of 95, my internship came to an end and I didn't have a job. My master's thesis was going nowhere. Um, and it, I remember, um, on New Year's Eve, we did the, the burning bowl ceremony and wrote our letter to God. And in my letter, I affirmed that I would have the perfect job with a high salary and, um, would have completed my master's thesis in six months. I had a hard time believing it at the time, honestly, but I wrote it and um, I affirmed it. And so did others in my mastermind group. And then things started to happen for me. And six months later, that letter found me in Kobe, Japan, um, where I was working in the perfect job with a great salary. And I had simultaneously just completed my master's thesis. So I was, I remember I was astounded when I read that letter. I it was the first time I saw clear evidence of the power of the unity tools in my life. And the power was so important that when I planned my travel home during the eight years I was uh, again in Japan and San Francisco. I would always plan stopovers in DC so that I could visit with Pat and Phil and stay with either them or Byron um, uh, and catch at least one service at Community on the Hill. So, and my career has focused on training and facilitation and coaching. And the work is really about developing self-awareness and leadership skills. And when I think about it, much of what I coach others to do can be linked to the unity principles. In fact, I've drawn from and recommended um, a couple of unity books 
regularly over the years. One of them is this one here, um, Finding Yourself in Transition by um, Robert Brumet. Um, and it's really just a, a great way of understanding the process of change and fear and how we um, can get over all those many deaths in our life um, to create new um, experiences and chapters and life. Um, before I close, and I think I may be going over, but I, I want to um, briefly highlight three of the lessons I've learned through Unity that I think are essential. And there are others. Um, but the first is God is present everywhere and all good. And to me, the, the present everywhere part is key. And so is the good part. Uh, even when it doesn't seem good, that's when the learning and the healing come in. Um, as someone said last week, Amalia was famous for saying, I can't wait to see what good comes from this. And that leads to the second one, which is we always have the power to choose. So choose our thoughts, choose how we breathe, choose our reactions. In this moment now, we have the power to choose. It takes work, but we can always consciously choose. And then the last one is let gratitude and love lead the way. Love and gratitude are the most powerful forces for manifesting positive change. So I, I like to say flick off fear uh, or flick off the gremlin that sometimes comes and sits on your shoulder. And um, instead, keep a gratitude journal or um, count gratitudes instead of sheep. Um, and steep your prayers and your affirmations with love and gratitude. Um, I could go on, um, and I know I shouldn't because my time is up or over up, um, but I'll close by saying that since I left D.C., I was a member of the Unity Church in San Francisco um, with the wonderful um, Maureen Bass, um, and uh, also have joined services uh, periodically in Albany, New York, and also here in New York City. But when I really want to feed my soul, I always end up coming back to you. So um, you, you all take the cake. Um, so that's my unity journey. And I thank you very much for inviting me to talk today. Now, my brothers and sisters, please sit back. Close your eyes if that is comfortable for you or lower, lower your gaze if you prefer and let us all prepare for meditation. Sitting here, I feel the incoming and outgoing of my breath, and I relax. Calming my breath, I focus my attention on my heart, breathing in faith and breathing out love and gratitude. My heart center is the home for my gratitude. Listening to some thoughts on gratitude, I feel my heart center grow and glow, and I am at peace. And in the brief silence following each statement, I will take the words to heart. Cicero said, gratitude is not only the greatest of virtues, but the parent of all others. Gratitude 
is a powerful catalyst for happiness. It's the spark that lights a fire of joy in your soul. Amy Colette. Gratitude makes sense of our past, brings peace for today, and creates a vision for tomorrow. Melody Beattie. And Meister Eckhart said, if the only prayer you said was thank you, that would be enough. From this center of gratitude and faith, let each of us give thanks for our church home and for all the blessings in our lives. And as we go on with our daily routines today and in the week ahead, our feelings of gratitude, faith, and love will nurture and bless us and the world we live in. We give thanks, and so it is, and so it shall be. Amen. about rainbows and what's on the other side rainbows are visions but only illusions and rainbows have nothing to hide so we've been told and some choose to believe it I know was a wonderful service and I want to thank Carolyn, Sarah, and Scott for their wonderful, wonderful stories 
that was just, it was just so inspiring and very interesting. And Karen and David, oh my God, thank you so much for your music. Wow. Very touching. Thank you so much. So now I'm going to say the closing prayer. My closing prayer, prayer is, your healing is at hand. You can sit back, close your eyes, and meditate on this prayer. My healing is right here. It is in the air that I breathe, the surrounding I see. It fills the space and it lives within my heart. It is in the light of day and in the darkness of night. It is in the clouds and in the sunshine. It is in the cells and atoms of my body temple. It is in the movement of my mind and in the activity about me. My healing is at hand. It is never than breathing closer than hands and feet. It is all present and ever available, abundant and plentiful. It is, right, it is here right now, wherever I am. It is mine without stint, mine without pleading or begging. It is mine to quietly accept, to bring me peace, assurance, and blessings beyond my measure. Its source is divine, and that source never runs dry, never is lacking, never withholds, never denies. It is the same yesterday, today, tomorrow, and forever. It is within me every moment. I praise and give thanks for this reality. And so it is. Amen. about rainbows and what's on the other side. Rainbows are visions but only illusions and rainbows have nothing to hide. So we've been told and some choose to believe it. I know said that every wish would be heard and answered when wished on a morning star. Somebody thought of it and someone believed it. Look what it's done so far. What's so amazing that keeps us stargazing and what do we think we might see? Someday we'll find it, the rainbow connection, the lovers, the dreamers, and me. La da 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 la la.
fabulous service this has been. Thank you, Carolyn. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Scott. And thank you, Karen and Dave. Um, I, I, it, it, I don't know. I, I, I was almost in tears several times during, um, during the service. Um, and I'm Cheryl welsh -Arier. I'm a member of the Board of Trustees. And I'm here to remind us how to give back to this fabulous spiritual community that we belong to. So Jan, if we could have the slide, please. Um, you can uh, make donations via phone, bank, using Zelle. You can use PayPal. You can send a check to the post office box, or you can just go to the website and click on donations. Many ways to give. And let's join now for the offering blessing. We are grateful for the abundance in our lives. We give freely without fear, knowing that God is the source of all our supply. We are secure in the knowledge that unlimited prosperity is available to us. We are grateful for all our needs being fully met, and we give back, knowing that giving and receiving are one energy flow. We are truly thankful for all of God's rich blessings. Thank you so much, Cheryl. This was a wonderful service, and I want to thank Carolyn, Sarah, and Scott for their wonderful, wonderful stories. That was just, it was just so inspiring and very interesting. And Karen and David, oh my God, thank you so much for your music. Wow, very touching. Thank you so much. So now I'm going to say the closing prayer. My closing prayer, prayer is, your healing is at hand. You can sit back, close your eyes, and meditate on this prayer. My healing is right here. It is in the air that I breathe, the surrounding I see. It fills the space and it lives within my heart. It is in the light of day and in the darkness of night. It is in the clouds and in the sunshine. It is in the cells and atoms of my body temple. It is in the movement of my mind and in the activity about me. My healing is at hand. It is never than breathing closer than hands and feet. It is all present and ever available, abundant and plentiful. It is, right, it is here right now, wherever I am. It is mine without stint, mine without pleading or begging. It is mine to quietly accept, to bring me peace, assurance, and blessings beyond my measure. Its source is divine, and that source never runs dry, never is lacking, never withholds, never denies. It is the same yesterday, today, tomorrow, and forever. It is within me every moment. I praise and give thanks for this reality. And so it is. Amen. And now we will all say together, let there be peace on earth. I'm not a singer like Margaret. She's beautiful. So we can sing this together. We can recite this together. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth, a peace that was meant to be. With God as creator, family are we. Let us walk with each other in perfect harmony. Let peace begin with me. Let this be the moment now. With every step I take, let this be my joyous vow to take each moment and live each moment in peace eternally. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Now the prayer for protection. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. And that's the truth. Now we are open for anyone to fellowship, share, and just- I just want to join in and say, give my thanks. 
Um, <clears throat> it was today's service was everything I hoped it would be, and then 20 times more. Carol and Sarah and Scott, thank you for sharing your hearts, your 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 private moments, your doubts, your searches, your your joys with us. It was fabulous. And I was moved, well, you know me, but I was moved through the music and um, a little bit of Kermit does, does just so much for all of us. What beautiful, beautiful songs today. And um, uh, I think what I loved was the, the spirit of faith, love, and gratitude that was present in everything we did. Aren't we a lucky group? Holy crow. Thank you all. Mwah. Anyone else want to share? Just give a wave. I'm happy to unmute you. Uh, I, I would like to jump in and say um, to our speakers today, thank you for such thoughtful and loving and smart messages. Really nice to hear more from you. And um, I'm getting to know Carolyn more because we're on the board together. I've had an opportunity, which I love, to get to know Sarah and hope to have more of that. And Scott, I really don't know Scott at all, so it was fantastic for me to, to hear your story. So thank you so much for that. And I just want to say, I, I don't mean to brag, but I do want to say that my experience was maybe even better than everybody else's because while y'all were reciting the, uh, the peace song, Dave was over here playing it a little bit. <laughs> so I was able to hear the piano accompaniment. This is super fun for me to be here, sitting here next to Dave and singing. Like so uh, yeah, this is great. Um, uh, th thanks to you all. Thanks. Thank you so much, Karen and um, Dave, for um, filling in on such short notice for Irene. Um, and she sends her love to the community. Um, her mother did pass away um, this past week. Um, so we've, I've been in a little touch with her. She's still in Italy, so I sent her our love. And Helen uh, Johansson sends everyone her love this morning. She's off with her daughter celebrating her birthday. So we send her birthday wishes. And um, yes, yeah, so our speakers, just, just so wonderful to hear you. So heartfelt, and I so, so appreciate um, you know, you're sharing your, your story with us. Um, I've known all of you. Um, over many years, and um, it's a pleasure to share this space with you each Sunday. So. Sylvia, I'm going to unmute you. Go right ahead. Thank you. Um, what, a, what a special, special morning. And and um, quite honestly, I wouldn't have been here if I hadn't talked to Byron yesterday, who said, Scott, you were going to be here. And I didn't realize it was all three of you. So I'm only, there's so much I could say, but let me just, me, try and be succinct. Just say how lovely it was. Carolyn, I don't know you. It was lovely to get to know you and hear your story. I'll start to cry, Sarah and Scott. Oh my goodness, you just, um, First of all, it took me back to A Street, but uh, you know, Sarah, every time you would be away and you'd be away for a long time and then you'd come back and there would just be this lovely, gracious, smiling woman. I was like, oh my gosh, you're back. And Scott, I mean, we I just, I'll never forget you. You were so special. So thank you all for being here, and making me remember how very, not that I ever forget, but I don't come very often, as most of you know. Um, how very, very special this community is and what we've grown from. Um, you know, how we started, that amazing little feisty woman <laughs> who said, Jesus can't save you. Um, it's just been absolutely amazing. And I think, Caroline, you were the one of you made a statement that I, I really, it, it was, and I, I wrote it down, but that was in the other room. Um, that it's the teachings of Jesus. It's just such, whoever said that, it's such a succinct way to me to say to someone else, it's the teachings of Jesus and not worshiping Jesus. And so whoever said that, thank you. I appreciate it. Bless you all, all three of you. Margaret. Hey, good morning. Um, yeah, you know, what a lovely service this morning. It it brought me down memory lane. Um, 
One of the things I think, though, that is um, really struck me is is the idea that it's that we're truth students that in our own way if we didn't grow up in unity we all hit this place that said mm, this isn't working for me and so we went to explore and find something that was true to us that that um that our god centers responded to and you know um carolyn sarah and scott that is the thing that i find um when we meet someone when we walk into a room of like-minded people it's more than just oh i feel at home for me it's like my heart has just opened up and uh it's thank you god someone gets me <laughs> so um and i have to say karen and dave um that the memory lane part there was a gentleman who was at the a street church and also i think he was at the methodist church for a while his name um, was reese jones he was a bass and we always used to think of him as our own personal bing crosby and um he used to sing rainbow connection and every single time he sang it i was transported to a happier place so thank you so much for singing that for me today <laughs> thanks everyone byron go right ahead i just want to say am i unmuted oh well you are i'll yes. talk real loud scott how wonderful to hear what you had to say and we will get together again and we will be outrageous because we always were. We're <laughs> good at that. So thank you. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Anyone else want to share? I was amazed at parallel stories of people who were away in so many different places and yet kept coming back time and time again and it made me think wow there really must be something special here these family these people that kept bringing them back so thank you for that um thank you for testifying to that as we say in the gospel tradition. Great service. Thank you, Kay. What, Jane, did you want to share? Yeah. And Joan, I think, did as well. Thank you, um, Jan. Wow. I, you know, Scott, Sarah, Carolyn, I, you really did blow me away. I, you, you just, you know, rem, you remind me why I love this community so much. I love the invitation to question the invitation to explore and to do it with, with other people who are on the same journey. You know, the camaraderie is, is just, I don't know, maybe the most important thing. <laughs> um, the connection that we have and how we're in this together. Um, and it just it was such a powerful reminder I too, so many memories and, you know, to have the long-term experiences of Sarah and Scott and then Carolyn, a relative newcomer, and, you know, to bridge all of that in, into one, you know, event, just very, very powerful. Uh, I think for me, hearing from our members is just so powerful because that's what we're all about, is taking these tools and using them in our lives. And sometimes they work for us and sometimes they don't. Yeah. There's always learning going on. And most importantly, always a quest underway. And I just am so grateful to you for, for bringing us all 
uh, on, on this path with you and for your contribution. So thank you so much. I am joining what other people have said, but I have to, I was struck so strongly this morning as the three of you did your testimonials that we are ministering to one another. And perhaps that's one of the many reasons that we all feel so close, why this is such a tight, long-lived group. I certainly feel it myself. So one of the teachings that keeps coming into play for me is that God is, is within each of us. And this morning was a particularly poignant proof of that, that each of you was preaching to us, if you will, in the best interpretation of preaching, giving a message that makes us think and say, oh yeah, I've been there too, or this is where they went with that. So thank you for today being our message. Um, and Karen and Dave, what a treat to see you two together. That was just the best. You've got good karma going on there, good um, chemistry going on there. It was a treat. Thank you so much. Thank you, Joe. Anybody else like to share this morning? Yeah, yeah. Marie. Marie and then Gary. Mm -hmm. Ditto <laughs> to what everyone has said. Um, and I'm just sort of shocked at how emotional I feel. <laughs> I'm sitting here crying. I don't do that real often. And it just, I think it just um, touched everything that was said is touching the history of it i think that's part of it you know to think back to 30 plus years ago mm -hmm. that some of us have been together doing this same stuff you know over and over and loving it every single time we do it over and over sing it over and over say it over and over um and all the people that have come and gone in our lives over those years you know to remember pat and michael and amalia you know it's um it's an emotional sort of heart touching thing for me. And I think that's another important part of this group is that we clearly are heart centered. Um, you know, it just happens over and over again. How many of you have said, oh, that first day I walked into that church, I just burst out crying by the end. <laughs> I, bet, I bet if we went around the, the screen here, we'd find most of us that happened. And it's all just really important heart centered stuff. And it's just lovely to be still be a part of this group and um that's i just love it thank you so much to all of you all of you always thank you honey appreciate your sharing and happy birthday to marie as well thanks <laughs> yeah. gary go right ahead my comment is that uh, the uh, three testimonials took me on a journey that I had been through, and uh, Scott and Sarah, you go back in time, and I was there, and it was uh, good to be there, and I remember you all, and so what a what a great uh, experience for me, and ob obviously for you. Thank you, Gary. Anyone else like to share this morning? Uh, Paula, uh, yeah, Kathleen, go right ahead. I'm just going to jump in. I was going to leave a chat, but thank you, everybody. Um, I really enjoyed hearing each of your stories. And Scott, I don't know you very well, but it was fascinating to me to hear your journey. And, you know, I can identify with certain parts of each person's journey. It was wonderful. And Sarah, you know, your journey, it's, you know, each of you, each of you, I could identify with parts. Um, and I want to, I, I see the Karen and they've already left. So they did a wonderful job and Sharon too. And Jim, thank you. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you. And uh, Paula had to leave, but she said to thank you to everyone for beautiful service and music. And Sandy is still here, but she chatted. This was amazing. Thanks to all who shared today. And Roy shared what a lovely moving morning. And it certainly was for me. It, it took, took me back to the old to the old days, but in the present too. Um, and how you know important it is to just keep living this message, right? Carry our message and demonstrate it, and that's what we're called here to do. Our fifth fifth uh, principle. And Maria just shared. Thank you, everyone. And Sarah, you are a great speaker. Glad you shared your light and story with us today. And we enjoy um, the course of miracles together. And that's that's lovely, Sarah. Anyone else like to share this morning? Phil, are you hanging in there, dear? Would you like to say anything this morning, Phil? Say hello. Hmm. I'm sorry, Phil. We can't hear you for some reason. You're, you look wired for sound. I think you can hear us. You can hear us. <laughs> Gary, we need the sign interpreter. <laughs> Anyone else like to share this morning? Allison or John? Anybody else who doesn't share? Otherwise, I hope you have a wonderful uh, rest of the day. Carolyn and Sarah and Scott, thank you so much. It was thank you. just a terrific, terrific yeah. service. And um, I'm off to the uh, Unity of Fairfax to go to Reverend St. John's memorial service today. And she spoke for us over the years and gave a prayer workshop and whatnot. And um, she was the one of the ministers out at Unity of Fairfax for many years and a good friend of Reverend Sandy's. So um, I know I'll see some of our friends out there and we will honor her and appreciate her today. So thank you, everyone. Thank you. Appreciate you all. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Have a great day. Bye-bye. See you, honey. Bye. Bye, Paula. Thank you, Scott. It was terrific. John, I'm working on that service, the Christmas. Been thank thank you, Jan. I appreciate that. Yeah, we'll, we'll get it there. Okay. Bye, everyone. <laughs>